Hello everybody. Today I want to talk about capacitor bank switching, which is one of the heaviest dielectric stresses for a breaker. To make the case, I will use the simulator, which can be found on the following address. I recommend that you use it as well. Uh, for training purposes, there is a user's guide on YouTube under the following address. Here is a simple single phase diagram to make the case. We have a voltage source. Then we have an inductance, which is representing the short circuit inductance of the power source. Then we have an RC circuit, which will tune the transient recovery voltage of the circuit. And we have a breaker and we have the capacitor bank. As long as the breaker is closed, there is a capacitive current flowing through the capacitor bank. And since this is, this is a capacitive current, there is a 90 degrees phase shift between the current and the voltage. So you see here, the blue curve is the source voltage and the green curve is the current through the capacitor. On a trigger signal, the breaker will now open. That means that the current will be interrupted at the next possible current zero. And what you see then, as soon as the current zeroes, the voltage at the capacitor on its maximum. And since the breaker is now open, there is no current anymore. So the voltage in the capacitor, the charge in the capacitor will be trapped. So this is a trapped charge. And you see this is this DC voltage in the capacitor, which is not removed anymore. So on the load side of the breaker, you will have this DC. And on the, on the source side of the breaker, you will have the continuous AC voltage from the source and the sum of the voltages across the breaker is this one minus cosine curve which is a huge dielectric stress for the breaker. We would assume now that the contact separation of the breaker happens around here and at the moment where you separate the contact uh, there is a dielectric withstand capability of the breaker which is increasing in function of the contact distance between between the contacts of the breaker. Between the moment of contact separation of the breaker and current zero, the current continues to flow. Of course, it flows through an arc, which is established between the contacts. If we are lucky, this recovery curve is uh, steeper than the one minus cosine curve of the, of the voltage across the breaker. And then the breaker is capable to withstand this uh, very heavy dielectric stress. If, however, we would open the contacts a little bit later, one or two milliseconds later, we would see that the curve, the dielectric curve is shifting and then obviously the dielectric curve of the breaker, the withstand capability of the breaker would hit the recovery voltage across the breaker and then we would get the breakdown. I'm now on the simulator. I have set up the circuit. You know how it works in the meantime. So in the first phase, I just tune the recovery voltage of the source side. Therefore, I open my circuit. I open my breaker. Put it to zero and leave it open. So this is now just for tuning the recovery voltage. I do it for 20 milliseconds run. So you see, this is now the recovery voltage. You can adjust it by the shifters here. And let's assume that this is now correct. For the next phase, I now go to the breaker. I close the breaker and I ask it to open after 238 uh, seconds. So 238 milliseconds. Why so much? I want to make sure that I can damp the inrush current oscillation at the beginning of the simulation. And uh, on the other side, I also put the recovery voltage strength at 75 kV per milliseconds. So then I have a quite steep dielectric recovery capability of the breaker. Let's now run this case and see what happens. So the first 100 milliseconds is to damp the inrush, the second 100 milliseconds as well. And now we see that the, the breaker was able to interrupt the current at current zero and we see this one minus cosine and we see the trapped voltage. At the last simulation run the breaker was able to interrupt the current and now we shift the contact separation even closer to the current zero. Last time it was 338 milliseconds we go now to 339 and of course we have to close the breaker and we let's see what happens now. So first run 100 milliseconds inrush current, 
second round still damping the inrush current and now it should open and what you can see now is the breakdown of the voltage because the slope of the recovery of the breaker is not high enough so it cannot anymore withstand this voltage across the breaker when there is a breakdown in the breaker the trap charge in the capacitor swings around the source voltage and at the moment of the breakdown the source voltage may be close to its maximum if the breaker is now capable to interrupt the swing current after one half cycle the trap charge in the capacitor will be even higher than before the breakdown you can see this here this is the voltage before the breakdown and this is the voltage after the breakdown and you can see that the voltage after the breakdown is close to double as high as before the breakdown this is exactly what makes capacitive switching so dangerous due to this very high voltage across the breaker we could now assume that there is even another flashover somewhere somewhere in the breaker and that even this flashover could be healed after one cycle let's simulate this case now so let's now add elements which could fail outside the main contacts so this would be another spark gap this spark gap would be set to 1100 kV. i would have it open and in order to make sure that this spark gap would be able to interrupt the current I just add a diet in series I mean this is just a kind of a model huh? and then let's see what happens now I have the inrush current so now you see now there is a failure again in the breaker and you see that the voltage across in the in the capacitor bank is even even higher than before so we have now a voltage increase of around about factor three compared to what we had at the beginning before the failure so we have now two failures in series and this would most probably lead to a total breakdown of the system as you can see here so this is exactly what why capacitive switching can be so dangerous if the breakers are not designed properly so we could now go for another example so instead of going with a very steep recovery curve as before uh, i make a very smooth recovery curve so the breaker would separate contacts very slowly or the recovery curve would be very slow and let's see what happens then let's start there so you see now the recovery is slow and we have inrush as last time Again in rush and now we should start to recover you see now how the voltage can you know, the breaker reignites very quickly so this is the first voltage across the breaker contacts it is not even able to clear here already and you see that now that this voltage is increasing stepwise yeah and it continues to increase and it can really get to very very high over voltages after a certain time so you see in this case the over voltage reaches uh, probably factor four times what we have now from the nominal point of view you see this is the maximum you can get with a very slow opening breaker so it is probably three to four times higher than the nominal voltage and this would dam definitely damage the, the capacitor bank the effect we have now demonstrated for capacitive bank switching can also happen on transmission lines because also transmission lines have a capacitance please go and have a look at the simulator which is under this address you can get hands-on experience this is the best way to learn and practice